Holy Gemini. Good afternoon class, my name is Alhanda Martinez and today we're going to be discussing equivalent fractions. So to start off the lesson, I am first going to give you three scenarios. Let's pretend that we have Bob and Billy and they have one pizza, right? So they want to share it equally and they decide that they're going to cut the pizza in one half. So Bob is going to get one out of the two and Billy is going to get the other one, the other slice for the whole pizza, right? So now they have one half and one half. In the second scenario, we have Tim and Tom, and they decide that they want to cut it in four slices. So because they still want to share it equally, they decide that each of them is going to get two. So Tim is going to get this half, two out of the four, and Tom is going to get the other half, two out of the four, right? And so on the third scenario, we have Peter and Paul. They also want to share equally, but they decide that they want to cut it into eight slices. And so Peter gets four out of the eight, and Paul gets the other four. Alright, so what pattern do we see here? Okay, so we see that even though they each have a different number of slices, they still have the same amount. Bob is still getting this side, Billy's getting this side, Tim is still getting this side but with two slices, and Tom is getting this side with two slices, and we'll hear Peter still getting this side, but with four slices, and the same for Paul. Just because they have different number of slices doesn't mean that they're getting more pizza. It's just cut differently. Hello, my name is Irma Enriquez, and now I will present to you another real-life scenario. We're going to pretend that my mom gave me a daughter and she told me to give half of the daughter to my brother. We know that we can literally cut the daughter in half so we have to use coins. We know that each dollar is worth 100 cents. So what if we only have quarters? We know that each quarter is worth 25 cents so we need four quarters to make the 100 cents. That means my brother will get two out of the four quarters which is equal to 50 cents. But what if we only have dimes? We know that each dime is worth 10 cents and we need 10 dimes to make up the 100 cents. So my brother will get 5 dimes and I will get 5 dimes. He will get 5 out of the 10 dimes which will still be equal to 50 cents. What if we only have nickels? We will need 20 nickels to make up the 100 cents. That means he will get 10 out of the 20 nickels but it will still be the 50 cents. Again, um, what we can conclude from this, from these examples, is that even though the number of coins we are using, the amount of money will be the same. Because when he gets half, either it's 10 out of the 20, 5 out of the 10, or 2 out of the 4, he will still be getting the 50 cents, which is half of the 100 cents, which is half of the whole dollar. Okay, in conclusion, I'm going to give you guys an equation that will sum everything up. And the equation is A over B is equal to N times A over N times B. Where A is any number, B is any number, and N is a number that cannot be zero. So N cannot be zero. Alright, so let's plug in numbers into these. So we're going to use 1 for A and 2 for B. N can be any number except for 0, so let's use the number 2. 2 times 1 is your A, and then 2 times 2, which is your B. And what is that going to give you? 2 times 1 is 2, and 2 times 2 is 4. Alright, so what we can see here is that 1 over 2 is not the same as 2 over 4, but just because they're different numbers doesn't mean that it's the different amount. It's still the same, just different numbers. To conclude this lesson, we learned that 
We learned that equivalent fractions are fractions that use different numbers, but they are still equal to the same amount.